Photographers are like silkworms. They make fancy things sometimes that cost way too much money for what they're actually worth. They live in cages and eat whatever their captors feed them. They're often boiled alive towards the end of their life. It doesn't mean if five of them came to me for help, I would turn them away. Come on. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. My light is clipping. I can see Sony's mad about that. What if I turned it around? It's facing this way. That's dumb. He's so professional right now. My only other idea was to stand slightly like this. Would you have noticed it? Is that your question? May I ask, given you have the Sony a7S III, why do you still film on the Canon EOS R? Do you find it better for these sorts of YouTube shots? I used to. used to think that. I don't know, man. Canon has the better color science straight out of camera, but once you get a color chart, and as I've shown you, you just draw a little box around it, and then DaVinci checks it. And then you automatically correct the colors that you had. And so once you do that, you notice, hey, my nose is bleeding. It's bleeding some weird colored blood. But this is good. It's easier. Learn to color correct your shot, and you'll be fine. So my last Q&A I filmed on both the Canon and the Sony, and side by side, I don't know, you could say that the Sony looks better now. I don't know, with the color tweaks, it's like, it is the superior camera, it has the better image, the better dynamic range, everything about it is better, it's just Canon has always had the color science straight out of camera, but I argue that that guy looks ugly as hell because he's bald anyway, and has forehead rashes. So like, no color science will save him. But when I got eye aids and I had to wear glasses, Canon stopped recognizing my face and I couldn't even use the damn thing. So I had to revert back to Sony and learn how to color with crayons. And so like these sometimes I wear just to appear smarter. And so my answers don't have absolute dog shit smell to them. And I find that Sony doesn't care. No matter what you wear, let's just do a little test. Next to me is a Canon fanboy. He's in 4K with a 24mm lens, makes it like a 42, and that's a 55. There's nothing fair about this comparison, but as we're seeing, color science exists, and one does a blue different maybe. But like, if I held up the chart, and then I matched the charts, boom, right? And then we're like, equal? and then color science doesn't matter, and then you just go with the superior camera, which is Sony. What is Canon even doing in the industry at that point? I don't know. You're a loser. You knew that. Do you have an opinion on the new Xperia? Main sensor aspect ratio is 433. The hell does that even mean? How is that a good thing? Why are you talking? Better low light without why be, oh God. The tech spec logical left brain lunatics that ask me things. Isn't that the same sensor, red, yellow, yellow, blue, that the Huawei P40 Pro has? I mean, don't get me wrong here, Huawei P40 Pro color science and skin tones are second to none. Especially, why are you moving at that speed? What, nobody can even see what you're doing. What were you attempting to doing that you needed that slow of a slow motion for? Your hair, it's not right. You're not beautiful. Usually beautiful women do that kind of thing. They sway in the wind and there's a fan and women are beautiful. You're, you deserve dog food. I can smell that you already know that. I think you should leave us all alone. We're done here. Well, wait, what was your question? Better low light, 120 frames per second on all lens. I'm just, 120 frames per second does not excite me, nor should it. We've had so much higher for so long. Like, I'm having 7,000 frames per second, and we're waiting to... I don't need slower than that, admittedly, that's already way too slow. I wouldn't mind some really nice 1920 frames per second. 1,920. That's really nice. 
The Huawei only does 720p in that. I would like to see that in a nice 1080p clean, nice dynamic range. It's the usability of the Huawei that kills me. It's, there's no manual focus. When I'm trying to like get a B, it's like, I have to hope that it focuses on it and it rarely does. I tap and that only does exposure. So it's like these Sony phones, I don't know, they're decent. They have like more natural color than the usual smartphone oversaturated, over sharpened look. But it's like 4K 120p, who cares? Like they, their older phones did 960 and they removed it even though their technology advanced. What is the point of their machines? And then their vlogging setup is like this weird flippy rig screen and like all these grips and cords and it's like, look, you can vlog. Just make it easy. Like that one phone did with the tiny screen on the front. I just want to frame it. Am I in? Come on. I'm not into downgrading or sidestepping my way into a camera store like a crab would for like equivalent specs. People are saying like, when are you getting the ZV-E1? Are you crazy? I have a Sony a7S III, it's better. It's just a slightly different firmware protocol. I wish it was in here, but it's not. And we have to live with that. But like, damn it, my Huawei phone is better than that in most ways. It's gonna be a long ass time before I upgrade. I thought of the C70, might be fun, but like really, you're not even matching my a7S III and you're gonna be worse in a lot of ways for what benefit? Mostly downsides and a lot of money. I have thought of getting the C100 Mark II. It still sticks in the back of my mind, but I feel like that is just gonna be a black magic OG nightmare all over again, just with the usability. Like I don't need another camera to do this. I want more fun and more slow-mo and more specs. And those cameras are old and they're irrelevant. Like 60 frames per second, 1080p in the, C100. Why would I do that? But if it looked better than the EOS R, I would consider some type of trade. What does any of this have to do with that guy's question? He's like, is the smartphone good? The C100 is not as good as the Black Magic. I'm a moron. We're moving on from his life. I helped him a lot more than you know. When comparing the same Tony 1.4 Tonyature of a full frame lens to a micro four third lens, does one have the same amount of Tony? but losing half of the light with the latter, or is the tonne of the two point, we're done with you, we get it. Listen, it, I can distill it in one very simple sentence. There's a lot of confusion amongst this, like, oh, it's half the double and double the light of half of it. In a micro four thirds camera, you get less than half of the tonne. Don't pretend your F2 is the same as a tonne four. It's n almost. On paper, it should be. It's slightly less than that. I've done it. I've done the math. I've done the comparisons. I'm at Tony 2 on the micro four thirds, stopped it down to Tony 4, still more Tony on the full frame. Same focal length. We did it with the Lawas, 7.5 mil, 15 mil. I haven't made this easy yet, but it will be. So you get less than half the Tony. Same light, but more noise. Now some nerds will say, okay, your Tony 1.4 lens on micro four thirds lets in less than half the light or something. It should be equivalent light if they're both 1.4, but the full frame sensor will have less noise at the same ISO. So you're getting the same brightness because I've done the settings side by side, same exact specs, 1.4, one over 50th of a shutter, 1000 ISO. Both the same full frame micro, same amount of light, same brightness, but you start increasing that ISO, full frame's gonna perform better, so it's better in low light, and it depends on the sensor technology. Things, there's worse full frame and better micro. I haven't made one bit of this easy for anyone. The more important question in your lens is the 3D separation, which is separate from Tunne. So you get a Leica lens on your micro four thirds camera, versus like a Samyang of a full frame, I think you would have the better pop and the better look on a micro four thirds. I'm just saying, just throwing that out there. But usually full frame is superior in every way possible.
Don't even look at another system. You're a loser. I switched to Canon. It was doing so well. Okay, now it has my eye. Now it's face. Canon just panics. Oh boy. We're in 4K, 24mm 1.4L lens. Let's see what happens. Is that your question? Some wisdom is required. Would go for the Sony A7S II with Zeiss Loxia 35mm or Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the Panasonic Leica 25mm. Wow, that is a conundrum. Secondhand hunter who tricks rich kids. Oh, you turned into a demon. Oh boy, you should have left that part out. I might have helped you. Here's the deal. Wow, that is a conundrum. Oh man, the Sony, you have Ibis. That's like about the only thing. Maybe a bit better low light too, but you're getting raw. Raw, man, like 12-bit black magic raw. And in 120 frames with a crop, slight crop, like four times crop or something. I would probably lean that black magic with the Leica? Are you kidding yourself? I wish I kept all my Micro Four Thirds lenses just so I could use it on my OG. Black Magic would be better. The Sony A7, it was the A7S III that really brought Sony into respectability. We got 10 bit now and like 4K 120p and holy shit, the autofocus. A7S II, like that's a manual focus lens. So you're not even getting, it had contrast detect, but it was better than Panasonic's. I don't know. I would lean black magic, but it's still gonna suck. It's that kind of thing. Like I don't do that kind of filmmaking where I'm out looking for scenes. I just like, that's why the OG doesn't really suit me very well. Neither would the Canon C100. It's like, I'm more into filming myself or doing goofy shit with super slow-mo. Neither of those help me. But I think the black magic will look better technically. You can grade it better. All right, for the last question, I'm switching to the Voigtlander. I cannot believe nobody will buy that lens off me. It's such a good lens. Unfricking believable. I've never had this much trouble selling gear before. I have a bunch of stuff that's just not going. It's our times. The world is crazy. People are panicking. They're just trying to trade potatoes for milk. They're like, I don't know what to do, man. I lost my job. I get it, it's panic city out there. Buy my Voigtlander, you piece of shit. <laughs> Voigtlander technology is unsurpassed. 20 mil one at 3.5. Had to change some lights, get a new light stand up in here. Need a couple more. Got Things got a little dark. Was that your question? Tell me more about your recording your episode sometimes. Do you use scripts for some of them? Some kind of teleprompter? Or do you just go with the flow? Start recording, say whatever comes to your mind. That would be interesting material. I myself use a teleprompter because I find it gives me the most natural results. I find that I can read a script and I sound like a human boy with emotions that I can display to you now. was that emotion um the scripts are so natural i love watching youtube content when it's just a script and it's very basic and it's read to me like a robot and i know exactly what you're about to say and it's very straight to the point and you have lots of b-roll and your timeline looks like there's all kinds of moving pictures to keep my interest go fuck i got so mad i had to switch to full frame When it comes to scripts, I love that they get straight to the point. Some of them are like really good. Like, thank you for not wasting time. Like I'm doing this whole episode. What am I even doing? Clowning around, losing seven subscribers a minute. I like it, but most people, it's so unnatural. It's their writing that's the problem, not the delivery. It's your boring ass writing. Like you wrote that. What's wrong with you? Like you're reviewing this camera and the Voigtlander lens. I saw a guy, side rant. It was a Blackmagic OG review in 2023, and it was so basic. He was literally reading specs of the damn thing. It's 10 years old. 
we could find the archives. The manuals exist. We know the specs. No one cares. Like, what's your opinion now of it? It was such a boring script. I was like, God, save him. You suck at writing is your problem. Write something funny. Write some jokes. How are you going to deliver it then? You won't. That's why you speak from the heart, you gypsy. That's why I, YouTubers are meant to be from the heart. You're not a news freak, a freaking reporter. They know how to do it because it's all about fear and they're afraid. Like, I don't mind Gerald Undone's scripts because I know, like, that's his thing. He's showing you the technical aspects of a camera. You don't want him goofing around. But I also like his live stuff when he is, like, showing character in his studio reviews. Like, he's, he does it well. He mixes it up. He speaks from the heart and from the robot script that he writes from robots. Some of you need to grow up and get better at writing or speaking or leave me alone forever. That's all I know for sure. I'm leaving. Which thing looked better? I don't really care what your opinion is. Keep it to yourself and just know it. And I will feel it. Because I have a heart. Like a human boy should. Yeah. Color exists. A ton of shirts are available. Subscribe more when I think.